Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Intel i5-11400. I'd like to say a huge thank you to CCL for letting me borrow this one. CCL Online is always my go-to website for PC components. I've had the pleasure of working with them before and for all of your PC component, laptop, monitor and basically all of your computer related needs, well I'd highly recommend them. I'll leave a link down below to the website in the description. Now you may have seen a few videos of the i5-11400 in action already and a lot of the time it's been paired with a high-end motherboard and graphics card. In this video I wanted to take a more budget approach. Should you get this over say the 10400 or 10400F if you plan on slapping it in a cheap motherboard and using an older mid-range graphics card? Furthermore, are the new integrated UHD 730 graphics any good? Let's talk about all of that. So first things first, let's talk motherboards. H510 boards are the cheapest option for 11th gen and unlike previous generation H410 boards in combination with a 10th generation 10400 or 10400F, you can actually use faster 3200 MHz memory this time around. That means that my 3200 MHz Corsair Vengeance RAM works in my cheap H510M S2H right out of the box after enabling XMP. Unfortunately, while a 10400 CPU will work just fine in this board, you will still be limited to 2666 MHz DDR4, so there's an advantage in favour of 11th gen on a budget right away. Going for a B560 board however will let you use faster RAM with both processors, but those are quite a bit pricier here. Going forward then, and I'll be comparing the 10400 with 2666 MHz DDR4 to the 11400 with 3200 MHz DDR4. Now that may sound unfair, I know, but this is a more realistic situation at the lower end of things. For all of you wanting higher end RAM and GPU tests, I'll be doing that later in the week, so don't worry. But as I said, today is more about budget stuff. Productivity wise and the 11400 will outperform the 10400 by quite some margin. The 11th gen chip scores better in Cinebench R20 in both single and multi-threaded tests and translated into real world performance. This means that rendering and exporting videos in processor intensive programs like DaVinci Resolve will be quicker with the i5-11400. This is a great choice if you want to start making YouTube videos, for example, or you just want to create the occasional film every so often for whatever reason. Don't get me wrong, the 10400 is still very good, but the 11400 is faster. For today's gaming tests then, I've chosen an RTX 2060. As I mentioned before, we'll be doing higher end stuff later in the week, but because the 2060 has seen a recent re-release and is somewhat available, albeit occasionally, I thought this would be a good place to start. Now you may be thinking that the 11400 will pull ahead yet again because of the faster RAM and because it's, well, newer. But from what I saw today, using the 2060 will actually yield similar results between these two chips, with both taking it in turns to outperform the other one. Because I used the 2060 here, which was and will be the limiting factor in pretty much every game at 1080p, it's safe to assume that using any graphics card that's identical to or weaker than this will also show no significant differences in performance when paired with either CPU. Except GTA 5. GTA 5 seemed to give us a pretty big difference in terms of average and 1% low figures. You might be thinking then, well surely the older 10400 is fine if a 2060 is going to be the intended GPU. To some extent, I agree. Where this thing stands out to me is productivity. Having said that, from what I've seen in some other reviews, reviews that do tend to use higher end cards, the difference between the 10400 and 11400 isn't huge overall either, and it seems as though as a gaming chip, it's a welcome addition to Intel's lineup, but it's not a brilliant one. It's good, it's definitely good, but there's no wow factor, especially when pairing it with a lower end GPU. However, let's turn our attention to the integrated graphics. If you buy an i5-11500, then you get the UHD 750 iGPU. With this one, you get the more cut-down UHD 730. 
I'll have some tests in comparison to Vega graphics at some point as well, but for now, let's take a look at how the onboard graphics compare to their predecessor found inside the i5-10400. I am of course talking about the UHD 6 30. Integrated graphics are easily ignored, but following with today's budget theme and considering that everything is out of stock right now, I thought we should see if they are any better. The 11400F may seem like the better bang for your buck chip right now, but at a time when that dream GPU of yours might still be out of stock, paying 10 to 20 pounds more to get onboard graphics as a backup doesn't seem like such a bad idea even if you just use them to watch live videos of graphics card stock checker websites. In Fortnite, utilising the new performance mode meant a much higher average with the UHD 730 graphics over the previous gen offering, but there was still a lot of stuttering. To some, this would seem unplayable because it is very off-putting and could mean the difference between getting the kill or being killed. It's still an impressive improvement and an almost 30 FPS increase over the UHD 630, so I'm glad to see that there have been some noticeable improvements here. GTA 5 with 80% of 1080p and low settings gives us an extra 11 frames per second. Not as significant, but the biggest difference is the fact that the game can now be played natively at 1080p with 30 plus FPS if you wish. Speaking of 30 FPS, Red Dead Redemption 2 now runs at 30 frames per second, albeit with another adjustment to the resolution scale. 50% of 1080p this time made the game look like a muddy mess, but compared to the result of the UHD 630, well, I'd choose the 11400 with the 730 any day. Let's hope Intel continue to improve their iGPU performance over time. It's early days for the 730, but already it's much better than the previous gen offerings. Overall then, I like the 11400. If you're using something like a 2060 or weaker and all you're doing is gaming, then it's probably not worth it over the 10400 or 10400F, which will do just as well or better in some cases. If you want to kickstart that YouTube career or edit some videos for fun on the side, you'll be better off with the 11400, and if you're working with a tighter budget in mind, then you can utilise faster RAM even with an entry level board. I hope you've enjoyed my budget gamers perspective of the i5, as I said there will be some higher end tests to follow and some Vega comparisons too, I hope you can join me then. Oh on the stock cooler, it's okay, thermals are fine but the noise is horrible, I could constantly hear it whirring up to high speeds every time the turbo speed kicked in of the CPU. It looks better than the old one that's for sure but that's about it. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.